if you fly at all, you know that it can try your nerves at times. Air travel on a bad day even getting to your seat on the plane could be a bit of an ordeal. Can't do anything about bad weather or other delays, but we can help you keep things moving on the ground. Travel editor Peter Greenberg here with a few time-saving tips for us this morning. Peter, good to see you. Good morning. Passengers, all right, let's give them a little checklist right now. Get your pen and paper ready. Before you leave the house, what should you do that's going to save you time? Well, the key here is not to stand in line if you could possibly avoid it. We have an entire generation of Americans who think their only goal in life is to find a line so they can stand in it. Here's the deal. What you do at home, you print up your boarding pass at home at night, the night before your flight on your computer, on your printer, how much time are you going to save? 30 minutes, because we know how long those check-in lines are at the airport. Yep. Okay, Very so there's simple. ones. You're saving us 30 minutes just by printing the boarding pass right. at home or having it on your smartphone, yep. which you can do a lot these days. You also say go to the arrivals level, level when you're departing. Exactly, because the departure level for those morning flights on those airports that have double levels, that's a zoo. You're going to get stuck in traffic. Who's arriving at 7 o'clock in the morning? Nobody. So have your car or your cab drop you off there, and you go right upstairs. Okay, so... You and by the way, time saved on that? Yeah. 10 minutes, and I'm being conservative. Okay. Nice. You try to save a little time by doing carry-on. You get to the airline, and they say, sorry, sir, we got to check that. There's yeah. not enough room too in the overhead. Too many people container. carrying on their bags. Exactly. So if you don't want to check bags, and you think that your carry-on might be a little too big, what can you do? Well, I've been doing this for nine years now. I haven't checked a bag domestically in over nine years. I FedEx my bags, I UPS my bags. You can do that on a ground service three days in advance for a discount and for about $20 per bag more than what the airlines want to charge you for either losing your bags or <laughs> delaying your bags, yeah. it's door-to-door -door service. And you know how much time you save there? How much? A lot. Because it's at least 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you have to check your bag in, then you have to go take it over to TSA. Right. And then let's not forget what happens when you land. you got to wait for it. Then you yeah. got to wait for it. And, okay. and I'm being conservative at 30 minutes. Yeah, and okay. that's 60% chance that your bag's going to be there when you right. land. <laughs> Which is the worst part. Okay, so so yeah. we've done that. Right. Another little tip you have down at the arrival, when we check, when we get there and we yeah. enter through the arrivals, is to check the arriving screens to figure out our departure gate for our flight. Exactly. Before you ever go to your gate, you've now gone through security. Departure boards have not told the truth since 1947. Let's call it what it is, because <laughs> what a departure board tells you is what time your flight is scheduled to leave on time. That's hopeless. What you do is you only look at the, the departure board for one reason, to see the gate that you're supposed to leave from. Now go right to the arrivals board mm -hmm. and see what's arriving at that gate. And if nothing's arriving at that gate till next Tuesday, why would you go to that gate? So the point is, you have the luxury of being disappointed there as opposed to going all the way to the gate. And then having to make your You're going to your save at least 10 else. to 15 minutes. 10 Easy. to 15 minutes, okay. Yeah. Well, boy, we're adding up right now. We are, kind of <laughs> yeah. like it. It's going to be quick. Because I'm okay. getting on a plane You land, hour. it's always very hectic. When you do land, you're meeting your relatives, friends, whatnot. Well, once again, you reverse the process. Disobey all airport signs. You have no reason to go to arrivals because your bags aren't going there anyway, right? Mm -hmm. You go to departure level because at arrivals, that's a refugee center. You have everybody there with police, guard dogs, screaming cabs. You go to departures level because there's nobody there. You get in the car, you get in the cab, you're gone. And, of course, you don't have to wait for your bags. And you've already I'm sent saving it you time. save five minutes. It's actually more than that. So total, add it all up for us. What have we saved now? 90 minutes. 90 minutes. That's insane. 90 minutes. And, and that, that gives you more time to shop at the... No, I'm kidding. But the bottom line gives is... Gives you more time to sleep if you've got an early morning flight. I mean, come on. But you really have saved all that time. Basically, it's a contrarian view. It works. It's counterintuitive. You disobey all airport signs, and you're going to get to where you go and save 90 minutes. I love go. the disobeying. <laughs> I just hope my kids aren't watching this. Peter Greenberg <laughs> told me I could disobey. I give, I give them permission. <laughs> hey, you're on a flight later today. You should try to break some of these rules. I am. I'm already working on it. Okay. Peter, thanks. Peter, thanks so much.